All right, this is the Galaxy S22 Ultra. We're gonna take this thing apart today and see how it looks compared to last year's S21 Ultra. Uh, I've been preheating this on the heat mat for the last 10 minutes or so at 75 degrees Celsius. Uh, that, that loosens the adhesive around the borders of the back glass. Uh, to do this, I'm gonna need some rubbing alcohol in this little bottle here, Phillips screwdriver, flat blade, and a suction cup tool. Um, let's dig right in. You wanna make sure that this is nice and, and heated. Uh, I use a heat mat because uh, it evenly distributes the heat. Uh, you might wanna use some gloves with thermal reduction so you don't get your hands burned. I, I'm used to it by now. I use a flat blade. A lot of people say that a flat blade is more risky and dangerous, but you know, it is what it is. If I break the phone, I bought it. <laughs> so. Once I get my blade inserted into between the glass and the body of the phone, I use alcohol to soften the adhesive around the outside edges. It's just easier this way than using nothing but force. The alcohol, I use 99% isopropyl alcohol. It does not cause any kind of a reaction with, uh, with the phone, so you're not worrying about frying your phone. And then you just wanna slide your blade gently along the edges. Again, you just have to be careful. If you get any kind of resistance, use more alcohol. If you're doing it right, your blade should slide right through. When you start to slow down again, use more alcohol. You just wanna be really careful. If you break the glass on a brand new phone, there's no replacements. <laughs> I guess it's not as bad since it's just a back glass, but there's no back glass replacements for these phones yet, so you'll have no back glass on your phone. And uh, I don't get these phones for free. I had to pay the full price for this phone, so. $1,100 phone breaking it for a video. That's not what I'm about. <laughs> Maybe at some point later, but luckily for me, I got that back glass off without breaking it and I'll be able to reuse it just by putting some new adhesive on there later. Set that off to the side. All right, so the first thing I'll notice is it looks exactly like the S21 Ultra and some of the Note devices I've worked on. I recently did, uh, I recently did a Note 20 Ultra and it looks fairly similar to those devices. You've got a bunch of Phillips screws and your cameras. Um, so we're gonna get right into this. Right here's where the S Pen goes. It's fairly indicative of Note series of the, of the past several years where the S Pen slides into the body of the phone. Um, each, each frame has a slot for the S Pen. Uh, if you've ever taken apart a Note 20 Ultra or any of the Note series phones of the past, that's, that's what that looks like. All right, so we're gonna start at the top with all the Phillips screws. Let's get zoomed in nice and tight. I have a magnetic mat just off camera that I use to keep my screws in place. That way they're not all over the place because again, there are no replacement parts for this phone and I need this phone to be fully functional when I'm finished with it. Thing I can notice right off the bat is these screws come out a lot easier than years past. Sometimes the screws will come off, will stop unthreading and then they'll just stay in there and you have to go back in with tweezers later to get the screws out. That doesn't seem to be the case this year. They're coming right out. Now for this part of the disassembly process, I'll note here, uh, this is the 5G antenna. You don't have to remove this to tear the phone down unless you're doing a screen repair. If you're doing a screen repair, you'll, you'll need to transfer this over to the new frame, but for the purpose of this video, we don't have to do that here. All right, so before we go any further with tearing down this phone, we want to take out the SIM card tray at the bottom. This, of course, you would have to do if uh, you were going to if you were going to switch the screen to a new frame. This part of the process was a lot more nerve-wracking than I expected it to be. I didn't want to risk breaking anything, so I started at the bottom where the adhesive sticks the wireless charging coil uh, down to the bottom of the phone and made sure I disconnected it before pulling it away from the body of the phone. Once you have the wireless charging coil pulled away, it's all pretty basic and simple. You have to disconnect all the cables. You probably should start with disconnecting the battery first, but I missed the battery um, and started disconnecting other cables, but eventually got to the battery. 
you don't want to risk frying anything and making that kind of mistake. Uh, but again, this is my phone I'm working on, so I'm not, I wasn't too concerned about it. Uh, and then just finish disconnecting all the cables. Uh, you have to disconnect all the cables to get the ba uh, to get the board out of the frame of the phone. Once you once you finish pulling off the plastics from the top and the bottom that have these little these other little components in here, the board pulls up and away. I did miss a connector as you see there up there at the top. And that if you if you go to pull your board out and you feel any kind of resistance, make sure you stop because if you just keep yanking on it, you're going to rip something important. And that's especially important in a phone that has only been out for a day and you can't get parts for. Now, um, we put the board over here out of the, to the side and uh, we're going to turn our attention to the front camera here. That front camera is glued to the frame of the phone. So unless you're doing a screen repair, I'm not tearing this, this camera out. I'm not going to have to risk replacing a camera that I can't get parts for. Flip the phone over and there are three screws holding down the charge port with the other end of those cables uh, that connect to the board. Uh, that's it. That's all there is to this phone. It's a very, very basic and simple repair. You could do a screen repair on this phone in probably 10, 15 minutes uh, if you're careful. Um, you could probably do it faster <laughs> if you're not careful, but you know, it, it takes very little time to tear the phone down. Like I said in the beginning of the video, this phone is very similar to S series and Note series phones of the past. If you've repaired one of those, you'll have no problem repairing uh, this one in particular. Now parts likely won't be available for this phone for several months I'd imagine. Uh, I did see that you can get a charge port for it and some other very small components, but the, the majority of the parts will not be available for this phone for some time. Um, you know, it's just one of those things where you gotta be careful with these phones when they first come out because parts are gonna be scarce. So now we're gonna uh, make sure we put the plastics back in their place, make sure that's plugged in up top uh, before we move back down to the bottom where the loudspeaker goes. Um, it's, it's a pretty simple process. It's just putting everything back where it goes and there's very few components that you actually have to remove. I like how Samsung makes these phones modular where it's fairly simple to replace this stuff. Now what I like to do is before I put the wireless charging coil back in place, I like to uh, connect the charging coil to its connector first. That helps me line up uh, the wireless charging coil, make sure all the screw holes are lined up. And then the last thing I do is smooth out the wireless charging coil and the adhesive down at the bottom. So everything sits nice and flat. You don't have anything kinked up at the bottom uh, or uh, at the top when you go to put your back glass back on. And then we can move on to the last process, which is putting the screws back in place. It's that simple. With new adhesive on the back glass, it's fairly easy to line up the camera lenses with the, with the cutouts for the camera uh, on the back glass. Uh, just make sure everything is nice and tight. Uh, all the edges are lined up properly. And what I also like to do off camera after I put new adhesive on, I like to heat it, set, uh, set it down on the heat mat and let it heat up a little bit. Get that glued nice and, uh, and uh, heated before it starts to dry again. It holds a lot better in my experience. And the next thing we do, and the last thing we do basically is just turn the phone on, make sure everything functions. Uh, we didn't have any issues. Uh, we went and checked the camera, made, stuck my SIM card back in it, made sure all the services worked and made a test call. Everything worked and that's all there is to the S22 Ultra. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you hit that bell so you get notified for all the videos. I appreciate you guys watching and y'all take it easy.